Hey friends, how's it going? We are back for hour two of uh, learning.net. Here are .NET fundamentals track on .NET Conf. Uh, we just came back from an hour of uh, messing around with the command line and using right. Notepad, which was great until people said, ah. I'd like to move beyond Notepad. <laughs> Help us please. <laughs> All right, but this is hour two. Uh, yeah. Just a reminder also that this is a multi-track show. So there are other tracks happening live right now, but also of course this is recorded. There's lots of great content if you're watching this recorded that you can go and check out. And you can back up if we went too fast and watch it again. That's right. right. Okay. So I spent time on my machine. Uh, we'll start very briefly looking at the slides on my box and switch over to your machine, which is uh, running a Mac right now. Uh, so we have three different possible tools for .NET. Right? We get the .NET CLI, where I spent all my time. But there's a couple of other tools that someone could use. Oh, that's right. And so uh, the three big ones from Microsoft, and there are ones um, from some other uh, vendors and other places, but uh, we're going to concentrate on the Microsoft tools, are the command line, which is what you just saw. The .NET CLI is what that's called. If you ask, you want to talk about it. It's just called the .NET CLI. That's what Scott spent so much time in. Uh, and, then, and then we have, he's having a little sort of trouble. We're going to let that go. Uh, then we have Visual Studio Code. Can't, they can't see me yet. Don't worry. We have Visual Studio Code which is available on all the platforms that you can run .NET on. So you can run that on a Mac, you can run that on Linux, and you can run that on Windows. And it's not only is it able to run more places, but it has some different perspectives or different approaches. And so we talked about sort of the, the CLI being maybe the stick shift. Uh, and then we're going to move into editors that are sort of a, a, a automatic transmission and a little bit nicer car, maybe some Maybe some leather seats, but not like the, the whole thing. And then I'm going to say that Visual Studio itself, the big Visual Studio, is like your Tesla. <laughs> it's a luxury vehicle. It's a luxury vehicle. There's a lot of complexity to it. And I was, I was uh, you were taking me someplace and pushed a button and the whole car raised up. This is fancy. This is fancy stuff. And so um, Visual Studio, you can use absolutely as a beginner, no question. But the corners of it are going to have buttons and things that will take a little while to learn what all of those do. So that's the differences between the three. I want to uh, stress again, they are all free. Um, there are some rules about using community that most of you will not encounter. But if you'd like to explore those, they exist at the website uh, that we're showing right now. So you can uh, check that out. I also want to, if you go to the next slide, I want to clarify getting a hold of uh, .NET Core 2 that we're talking about. Because there is more than one way to do that. And if you're running Visual Studio 2017 Community Edition and you update to 15.3, all it, all, it will just happen. And that's the best way if you want to be in Visual Studio to get .NET Core 2.0. Um, otherwise, you'll go and get the SDK, which uh, Scott showed earlier. And we've already said what a SDK is. And just for clarification, that's a bucket that has all the tools except the editor that you need for development. Mm -hmm. OK, so that kind of gets us ready to go. I think that's enough. So all right. uh, uh, can the let's folks in the back switch us over to the, uh, the I think we're already there. switched. There you go. You are yeah, switched yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, actually, let me make that bigger uh, to s start with. Hang on a second. There okay. you go. Okay, Scott, I am new to the Mac, and it has just misbehaved on Go me Go ahead and just bit. type clear. Clear is not, is clear the problem? Clear will definitely make it better. All right, there we go. So I do want to make that bigger uh, because it's a little bit small, but when I make it bigger, then it goes to the bottom. There we go. Now I'm happy. Okay, so we're starting out in a directory called My Fabulous App. Where do you think I got that from? That was copied over to your Mac from my Windows machine. Right, and I thought it was still here where I could show you in, in real in real life. This is not faked. Um, I just uh, got that from you, mm -hmm. and so now it's on my machine, Mac. Yep. We took it directly from yours, and so now uh, let's take a look at what we've got here. Uh, since I'm on a Mac, I can't type DIR. I have to type LS, um, but I can see that we've got exactly what you started with. Mm -hmm. And if I do .NET build, it's going to build three applications for us mm -hmm. here. Okay. Now, the one of the things we didn't get a chance to do uh, when you were working on this application is to actually have anybody talk to the library or have that library actually do anything. Right. We so didn't plug the library. One. We didn't reference the library from anywhere. And it doesn't do anything yet. Okay. It doesn't even hello world. It, it just it, sits there. It just sits there. It's yeah, a yeah. very boring library. So could, I, could I impose upon you, though? Yeah, you go ahead and tell me what you'd like uh, to do. .NET dash dash version, just to confirm. Sure. Because we talked about how important that is when working in small groups. 
Absolutely. And okay. then if you wouldn't mind typing which.net, I typed where.net. So you see that on, on my machine, it was in program files, mm -hmm. you know, .net, mm -hmm. and on your machine, because you're in a Mac, it's in user local share. And that's where it goes if you drag it into application. Mm -hmm. So exactly. that, that's where that's, that's okay. sitting right now. So I'm going to say code space dot, and if it all goes well, uh, I'm going to get a uh, copy of Visual Studio Code, and I'm going to make that a tiny bit bigger here. Interesting um, point. Remember when I was on Windows at the command line, and I typed mm -hmm. start space dot. Right. You typed code space dot. That dot represents the current directory. It absolutely represents the current directory, but I also want to show folks that that was, um, I had to do something sure. to enable that because mm -hmm. normally I could have said open space dash A for application space code and I could have gotten it that way, but instead I wanted to go ahead and put this in the path so that uh, I could open it quickly. Mm -hmm. And you do that with uh, control shift P which I was having a little bit of trouble with earlier. Hopefully, it's going to help me here. Okay, so uh, if I say shell, uh, you can it's just say path right there, and you see it says install code command in path. Where is it? I'm not seeing it. Second one from the top. There it is. Yes, that's the one I want. Mm -hmm. So I've already hit that, and that's why I could say code space. So if you, otherwise, you have to open code in some other way, like in Spotlight, going uh, command space to bring that up, and then typing right. code, getting it up, and then hitting this, and then you can do code from the terminal. Right. So if you're on a Mac or you're on uh, Ubuntu, the first thing you should do after installing code, installing .NET, is to add code to your path. It'll make your life easier. It will make your life easier just to be able to get right there very quickly. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing I want to show you about this. Another thing I'd like to show you is that the settings are a little bit different than you might have expected from some other tools. So I'm going to say settings, and it says preferences, open user settings. Mm -hmm. Well, here, if I go also under code, I can go to preferences and get to settings. Both ways do the same thing, and this is actually a file. So particularly if you're coming from some Windows programs or some Microsoft programs that have preferences set with a GUI and, and that kind of thing, that's not the way code does. The settings are, are, are appear in a file that is specific to you. It's your user settings or specific to your project which means if you happen to have that spaces versus tab argument going on per project, you can set uh, features like that. But the way you do it is to actually copy things, and I'm just going to type font in here, and if I wanted to change the editor font size, just the editor font itself, I could drag it, acro I could drag it across. Actually, I have to do control C, uh, control C, and then come up. Sorry about that. Let's get okay. back. Uh, control C, let's see if I got it. Uh, well, and you actually get IntelliSense, so even easier would be to just say quote and type editor dot, and you'll get IntelliSense for that. All right, experience. let me try that. So editor editor, dot. editor dot font. And typically, you get IntelliSense. I didn't, but I can still type it out. So we, th mm -hmm. this experience is there. I'm going to just show that um, Zoom is the one that I wanted to show anyway. So mm -hmm. I get rid of that, and then if I do Control plus, and make it larger and close this so that we can actually see it. Mm -hmm. There we go. Uh, that should be getting larger as we go. It's actually not. There okay, it is. It that. looks great. Okay, so uh, you can also type the zoom in there and then uh, press. Uh, that's going to make it a little bit smaller when I save. Okay, so that'll be your default. Yeah. All right. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, let me close that. Um, so those are a couple things that I just wanted to let you know about so that you can make the code experience a good experience uh, for you. Now, when you first come in here, you're going to get a welcome screen. And there are some useful things on this welcome screen. I'd encourage you to explore it when you get the chance, but it's also useful to close it because it gives you some really important tips. So when you close the welcome screen, you find out that show all commands, that's what I used to set the, the the uh, install into path so that when I take s type code space dot, I get back to Visual Studio Code. Mm -hmm. Also, if I want to go to a file, I want to find a symbol um, and go to a file, I can just do uh, uh, command period. I'm still getting used to my Mac. If I inadvertently use the wrong words, uh, Scott will try to correct me um, on that. I will do my very best. So, the biggest, there's a couple of big things we get moving forward when we go from the command line into Visual Studio Code. Mm -hmm. It's an editor. It's just got more stuff to it. 
And then it also does a um, close relationship between the folder structure of your project and what it shows you in the editor. And this is actually a pretty big deal because as Scott was creating this, you had to keep in your head what the relationship was between these directories. And as you create more complex projects, there's more directories. And keeping that straight in your head is a little bit difficult. Now you could go to Explorer or Finder and work it out there, but it's just an awkward way to work. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at this uh, Explorer that's inside code, and you'll see that each of the directories is right there. And we can open it up, and we see that the console app then uh, exists and has the program that we looked at. And there's something we haven't worked with yet, which is class one in the class library because Scott created it, mm -hmm. but he actually didn't put any code in there. So I'm going to double click on program and come down to this work that he did with this person. So he created a class called person and I'm going to delete it. Uh oh. I'm going to kill it. Refactoring via subtraction. I am, refactoring means make better. It's a big word for, for a small thing. It well, deleting my make, code makes it deleting better. Deleting your code. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. so I'm going to come over here. I'm going to actually uh, kill this and I'm going to say control V and now person is here. Now this would be annoying uh, to me later, uh, to other people you were working with because the name of the file doesn't match the name of the class. So if you're just looking in Explorer and you have class one, class two, class three, you have no idea what's going on. You do have an extra curly brace. Oh, and that is, did you notice it was red? Yeah, it was the red isn't that caught that, my eye. Isn't that so cool? So uh, when Scott was working in Notepad and on the command line, he actually had to build and mm -hmm. then get red. Ah, this is just this little tiny oops. Yep. And so I think if you hover over it, it might actually tell you what's okay, wrong. Okay, let's, let's go ahead and see. I'm going to put it back in just so we can hover over it and it says something that's not helpful. Well, end of file expected. Something happened before. Yeah, I something expected, happened. But right. I know it's curly brace related. Yes, it is definitely curly brace related. Now, I'm going to actually take this one out to show something else, which is now it's not formatted nicely. And this is important to me. And I love to imagine that this keystroke combination was named after me because you can remember it, it's my initials. Control K D. Oh, it didn't work. Ah. I don't know why they didn't work. What it should have fixed it. Control K D should fix uh, should format. You're on a Mac and I'm on a Mac and the keystrokes are different. Your bindings crazy. are different and you, you remove ah. control to command. We're just gonna you okay. just go to the menu and do it. I could just do it from a menu. Yeah, format. Okay. Document. But then that blows it being my name. So that's okay. We'll be fine with that. Okay, so now what we have is a library that contains person, nothing else, but that's okay. Just contains person, and that's sitting out there. I'm going to rename the name of the file. Uh, I'm going to rename that to person. Okay, and now I'm going to just double check that this project here should, um, it knows about it because everything in that folder is going to be included in the project. Now, if you have used any previous versions of .NET years ago or something, and you ever opened the project file, it was this wall of gunk. It was just a huge mess. And every single file had to be listed. That's no longer true. It's clean. It's nice. It just says, hey, if it's in the folder, use it. Now, that's the default. So if you want to specify all the files or you want to exclude stuff, there's a lot more stuff you can do there. So program now has a squiggly. That's what we call the red thing as a red squiggly under person because mm -hmm. it has no idea what a person is. Right, because you deleted the person class and mm -hmm. you moved it over into the other library. That's right, and so it can't find it. Mm. It does. Remember we were looking for the Newton soft and we had to actually tell it about it existing. Now just to be clear what's happening, I'm actually going to go back to the command line uh, to do this and uh, let me get there. And now I'm, whew, it's become very small. So let me uh, make that large again. Let me get that big enough. You can see it. I'm in my fabulous app. And now I want to go into uh, the directory for the console app. So I'll do ls to see what's here. I'm going to do um, it is cd on uh, my console app. And I'm going to have to, t no, uh, if I say console, get that with the tab. I'll go in there. And now I'll just ls to be sure I'm in the right spot. Everything's mm -hmm. as I expected. And now, remember we had the, um, the add that we used to bring in the package. I said .NET add package. So it was a multiple yes. steps there. Yes. .NET add package. So I'm going to say .NET add 
reference. Reference. Now, reference means there's another project within this solution, and I'm going to tell you where its actual project file is. So instead of saying, hey, I'm going to bring in this thing off the, off the web from NuGet, I'm going to bring in something that I actually already have, that it's mine, and I know exactly where it is. And it will always be in relation to this. I can't m start moving these separately around my computer. And I'll see if I can get this typed uh, without making any mistakes. Scott, watch me here. All right. And so I listed that so that I could find the... L oh, um, you should be able to it's right there. My cons yes, as soon as I start it, I have to get that far. Actually, you don't. I don't? Yeah. I, when I type... Uh, when I just type that and hit tab, nothing happens good. You so will get, yeah. what you'll do is you'll, uh, on a Mac, it's a little different than on Windows, you'll get a list of what's possible and then they will re re repeat the line. So here you type .NET add reference my tab. Instead of getting it in line, they list it out. Oh, I see. They're Got doing it. A, an LS for you. Okay. And then they bring you right back there. Okay, so as, as I said, I am sort of new to the Mac. Mm. Um, I'm loving it, but it's uh, definitely, have, I have a lot to learn, so thank you for that. Um, okay, so I'm going to add a reference to the current, the to, to the project in the current location. I'm going to add a reference to another project. And if I hit return, all should go well here, and it's been added. So uh, you can do this in different ways, but I wanted to do it in a way that was very clear. This is the action that we're taking to say this particular um, project, console, knows about this particular library, my class lib. So let's go back to code. And now it's still got a squiggle because all we've done is made the two projects know about each other. I'm going to come to the, uh, to the person class, and it has this silly namespace called my class lib. I'm going to live with that right now, but I could give it a better name um, if I was actually doing something that I would be working with on a longer basis. Where's that one? I'm a little confused about that. And right, I think so when so I build, that is going to go away. It, it just it says that, that there is a, uh, yeah. already has a definition. All right. Well, I'm a little let's, surprised let's, by that. Let's build. Uh, well, let's I wanted see. to go ahead and um, add this using statement first. All right. So the IntelliSense that's happening inside of Visual Studio Code, uh, that the thing that's giving you the squiggles is just like when you're doing spell checking in Word, it's running in the, back, in the background. Yeah. And sometimes things get a little bit out of sync if you move fast, like Kathleen does, and you copy things from place to place, and it maybe hasn't caught up with you yet. So when you do to build, it'll tell you what's really wrong, or it'll allow it to catch up. So let's find out. So you can do a couple of things. What I would do is uh, I would use the terminal inside of, that's built in. It's just a convenient way to avoid you having to switch back and forth. You can go... Open new terminal. Shift, yeah, shift command C or open new terminal. But that's actually not the integrated terminal. That's not terminal. what I meant to do. What I do is. Uh, yeah, that's not what I wanted to do. We're going to come well, back here. I usually use control tilde, but remember that you remapped your control to command on your Mac. Thank you. Thank you. All, All right. right. And then I would have probably move this over a little bit Let's to the left. Let's make that just that's go been away bugging for me. now. Okay. Okay. So, now we so can why don't we just do a .NET build and see if the entire application builds to make sure we haven't missed something. Okay, and this is at the solution level here. Mm -hmm. We so can tell by the through. prompt. It might be that uh, Visual Studio Code is a little confused about their, their yes. stuff. Yes, and I'm a little surprised that it's, it still has squiggles when it's building, but this happens sometimes sure. just as it all gets synchronized. And why don't so you, uh, uh, it'll happen sometimes. Why don't you close it and, and open it again? All right, so we'll do that. So you can go uh, Command-Q or Control-Q on your machine. Control-Q will allow you to exit any Mac app. And then back over here, if you recall, go ahead and escape there. You said that you wanted to be able to write a code dot from your MyFabulous. So you're in a different location here. This is a different... A different terminal. I am. So uh, let's go find our. Yes, uh, let's our find other terminal. it. There you go. Why don't we yes. go ahead and make that a lot bigger? Yes, thank you. It's a whole world of uh, new command yes, line. Yes, yes, uh, all these tricks hotkeys. and things. And, uh, and so uh, you want to run? You want to, we already so built. We, we just um, closed code. Oh, we let's run code again. again and see if we can get those squiggles to, uh, to line themselves up again. Could be a hiccup. Could be something that we did. So let's go ahead and uh, open that up. And, and we're, uh, close we're gigantic. Our, they're, they're selling us some release notes here. Kay. Let's go back and look. And uh, it's still not happy. But, uh, okay, so let's here it says typer namespace person not found. Why don't we open up the uh, file here, if, okay. you don't, if you don't mind. Yeah, 
We haven't saved something and here. And let's open up the My Console Well, let's app. look at the fact it says two unsaved. That's not a good sign. Oh, that's a very good point. Yeah, Maybe so that's let's, the issue. Uh, let's start with Maybe them. that is the issue. Let's start with that. Ah, see? Yes. So ah, this is a great point. It is a fantastic point. If you don't mind to, to indulge me for a Please. moment. Please. I've been doing this for 25 years. Uh-huh. I would assume you've been doing it for possibly a similar amount of time. Yeah, possibly uh, <laughs> longer. <laughs> possibly, <laughs> possibly longer. Uh, but the thing that's so important to note is that even though we're uh, we're arguably professionals, this is the kind of stuff that happens all the time. Uh, you'll hear jokes that your programmer friends, uh, who perhaps are a little bit older, like myself, and will say, "Oh, that was a thousand dollar semicolon," <laughs> because a semicolon. Or if you recall, mm -hmm. a moment just moments ago, you had a. Uh, a curly brace that's that right. was misplaced. That's right. Don't feel bad. This happens to everybody. Yeah, I just, it just happened to us. I just got tripped up on that. We got to the other side of this. I and didn't see it. Uh, you didn't see it. Yeah, we yeah. got there. Yeah. But it's funny. So the issue was we literally hadn't saved those. But we learned something mm -hmm. because we are reminded of something we mm -hmm. already knew, that there was a dirty flag. Could you maybe add a space for yeah, me? Yeah, let's do that. Let's make sure everybody uh, sees exactly what, so we were, what I finally saw, which is uh, in, this, uh, in, the, in the open, Mm -hmm. editors under open editors it says one unsaved and that's the key thing that we grabbed uh, mm -hmm. a hold of to right. get that i just used the term dirty flag that's what it's yes. a flag it's a, a one or a zero it's an mm -hmm. on or an off and you'll notice that there's actually a dot right there that's on correct program and there's a dot right there and just like kathleen said it says unsaved many many options and opportunities for either of us to have noticed that none of us did right as soon as and, and, and interestingly i think it's funny did you notice that my first reaction was to blame the editor? Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll just close, close it. the editor. Well, in I fact, I did too. Uh, I said visuals. It might be out of, out of sync. As as <laughs> as my uh, as my my father likes to say, there may have been an error between the chair and the keyboard. Yeah, that's what we had so, here. Even if we don't have I, chairs, I apologize so, yeah. for that one. Yeah, no, no, that's great. Um, I'm sorry, Scott. This is bugging me. <laughs> Before we go on, I just have to make that change. <laughs> important and crucial change. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Okay. So let's right. just to make sure okay. though, if you wouldn't mind, would you open up this CS project? Let's because absolutely we'll do that. It was my intention to open that before and afterwards, but we'll, we'll just, you can imagine this didn't exist yeah. before I did the, uh, this was what I did in the, ter in the terminal, which was .NET space add space mm -hmm. reference space path to what we actually right. were doing. Maybe you could juxtapose line seven and line 10 there. Uh, juxtapose is in compare uh, intellectually or take Com out the lines in between because they would both work. Compare and contrast. So <laughs> right. you'll recall line 7 was created when we said .NET add package. Right, that's correct. And if you notice there, it's a little bit small. Uh, actually, let me just, um, let me make that a little bit bigger here. One says package reference and one says project reference. And this is a very important difference for you because sometimes something's already going to have been built. Remember we went through that process and we got the DL out. And sometimes it's already going to be built and there's a DLL. And maybe you built it. Maybe it's from NuGet. Maybe it's from a friend of yours. There's many different ways that DLL might have come into existence. Do you make sure it's somebody that doesn't, isn't nefarious. Mm -hmm. But you get a hold of that DLL and the package reference, um, and, and the package reference itself is, is a way to get it from NuGet. So if it's packaged, it's going to automatically download from NuGet if it doesn't exist. So um, if I had uh, gotten from Scott this without including the Newtonsoft, it would have gone out and found mm -hmm. it. Um, and then the second one, I'm saying, I, I have that. I actually have that code right here, right now. And when you do things, you need to go build it as well. And so it, um, that is pointing over to that project file. And it doesn't, it's not a DLL, it looks at the project file and it actually does the work uh, in real time. Mm -hmm. So do you think we should stop here or should we go ahead and run a test against this? Because uh, we, we could do a couple of, of things here. Um, I was going to go ahead and also make a little bit of web apps here and I'm not sure which place we should go well, next. So we, we've, we, well, let's just make sure that we understand that we have a console app, we have a cl cl class app, we've talked to those different apps. Mm -hmm. We're looking at it though in Visual Studio Code. code right. And it, it, my perspective is that we are seeing this in a very file centric very file perspective. Centric, right. And these references that you've just brought up, I think intellectually it's a little bit difficult to uh, to understand. I, if you wouldn't mind, I'd like you to go over to your virtual machine and could you open this up in Visual Studio 2017? Sounds like a great idea. That way we could see how a kind of a full IDE, an integrated development environment, looks at this rather than a, uh, a code editor like Visual Studio Code. And this isn't in any way to disparage either of the two things, but it is to kind of juxtapose 
Uh, we had a text editor in the form of Notepad. We have a code editor in the form of Visual Studio Code. And then we have a full development IDE in the form of Visual Studio. Why don't you go and find that fabulous app, my fabulous app, on your, now she's on her Mac still, but she's just jumped over onto uh, uh, her boot camp. And here. to be clear, I have my VM set up so it can talk to exactly the same directory uh, that we just had. We're looking at exactly the same thing. Now I'm actually going to give you a possible gotcha maybe before you hit it. Okay. This is important, and you'll find this if you're also a Windows person who uses the Ubuntu subsystem. Uh -huh. If you have anything open over in Macworld, uh -huh. if it's running, if the folder's uh -huh. open, if .NET's running, if Visual Studio Code is open, okay. they'll fight. Will they fight? Should I should go close that? Yeah, so I would just jump just over to Mac this. and I would just close that. Because All Visual right. Studio Code has those DLLs open, those assemblies, those libraries open, right. and it's doing IntelliSense with them. That makes it difficult for Windows over in the, uh, in the virtual machine to update those files in place. Okay, but my terminal isn't actually, I want to make sure I wasn't running in terminal. As long as you're but not, not running .NET. So since commander. I'm not running, so we'll be good with that. Chances are this will work just fine. Okay, so here we are, and this is, again, I've gone now to home your, on the Mac. That's your conference planner. We want to look at the Fabulous app. Oh, you're right. It's right there, too. Here's my Fabulous app. All right, there we go. Click on Solution. Okay, Trustworthy. Now this is interesting because Kathleen has chosen to have the Mac and the Windows machine talk to each other. Right. The the Windows tr thinks about that as a as a network drive. Uh, the, another way to get around that, of course, would be to just copy that entirely into Windows. Really, an an administrivia, uh, administrivia but administrivia. Uh, still an important thing to point out. Right. Okay. So uh, the um, now look. Hang on. This is important. Look what's happening in the corner here. You didn't. This went really fast. But and see the corner yeah. there. It says restore completed. We were talking, but as soon as you opened that, something yeah. started happening. It automatically uh, opened that, absolutely. It ran .NET Restore uh -huh, to which make we sure, did. which we did as well. Well, we did it once explicitly, and mm -hmm. we also, every time we did .NET Build in the background, that does a .NET Restore as well to keep right. it a little bit simpler there. So that's a great point. You point out the difference between us doing it explicitly mm -hmm. and Visual Studio proper, or Visual Studio 2017, mm -hmm. doing it implicitly. Right. So just on the open, it kind uh -huh. of reasserted itself. Right. To make sure that everything was okay. Right. And then, uh, in a way, it looks a bit the same in the sense that we happen to have a folder structure and a solution structure that match, mm -hmm. but they actually don't have to. So, uh, while the solution, our, our solution, my fabulous app, having a class live and the console app and the uh, test looks a lot the same, mm -hmm. they don't actually ha they're not forced to be in that directory structure when we look at it. Um, in Visual Studio. They could be laid out a little differently on disk. Sure. Not that I'd recommend it, especially if you're ever using code. This is a pretty traditional way to do it. This is a traditional way to, to this is the way you're going to set it up. Mm -hmm. um, so now I can do the same things I could in code. I can double click and look at it. Would you mind closing the properties pane there at the bottom? I'd be happy to do that. And then open up all of your, de open up your dependencies, each of those three nodes sure. that are called dependencies, because that didn't exist before. No, this, we don't get this in, uh, in, when we're working in Visual Studio Code, we don't get this. And so we have a dependency on the SDK, which is just going to tell us this is a standard library. We'll mm -hmm. talk in a minute about what that is. Now, when we did the console app, we brought in Newtonsoft. We still have that there. So you can see it right there under NuGet. You know exactly where that came from. And then we also have another one called Projects. Under Projects, that's what we just did. Mm -hmm. We just brought in that class line. And so now we're, um, we're all organized uh, together on that mm -hmm. one. Now, the unit tests, again, I don't know if we're going we're gonna to try to set the unit tests up or just uh, go on to other things. Well, if you open up the NuGet, just like we brought in Newtonsoft on it's the console app, Remember that we said we were going to be using uh, XUnit. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of different mm -hmm. uh, t testing frameworks, but that's the one we're using. That's a third party as right. well. And you also notice that it has a test runner. So we were able to mm -hmm. just type .NET test and it worked. Mm -hmm. uh, Visual Studio should be able to do the same thing. And if we were going to write those tests, we would set a reference, just like we did from the mm -hmm. console app to the class library. We would set a reference, probably in this case, between the test and the console, well, we do that probably sure. either console or the, or the whichever one we're testing. You moved person uh -huh. out of the console app and mm -hmm. into the library mm -hmm. so that others could share it. Right. So then you're telling me that you would then have a reference between the unit tests and the class library such that you could test person. A a against whatever we were testing. Against we whatever would we do were that. testing. Exactly. And then uh, I give, oh, the other thing I wanted to just point out here is on these SDKs, um, this is actually telling us a little bit about the type of app that we're creating. 
And the console app is called a .NET Core app. And it's, it's a detail, but it actually runs natively on your machine. And you would rebuild it for different machines because it's got a, a little bit of differences there. The .NET standard library is something that you can share across every platform .NET runs on, which is incredibly exciting. There's a couple of weird side cases where it's going to have a little burp on some machines. But you can take the same basic code. Um, you could create people. You could create uh, JSON. You could do all that mm -hmm. on a phone or on a uh, whatever machine, the 64K to 64 gig yep. uh, comment that you made. And that's just so exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and John Galloway here on .NET Conf did a full half an hour on awesome. .NET Standard. And of course, you may be watching this live, but just a reminder, if you're not watching it live, this was part of .NET Conf. You should make sure you take a look at that full half an hour that John did with Absolutely. lots of great demos on how to share code exactly like Kathleen Absolutely. just Absolutely. So, so that's, I'm very excited about .NET Standard, so I'm really glad we had a chance uh, to bring it up there. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so are we, I'm what else do we want to do to your would app? Would you mind test? Let's see if the test runner works. Uh, go okay, ahead and click sure. on my unit test there. And Oops, sorry. let's go, I think you go to the view, uh, the view menu and bring up the test explorer. Um, yeah, okay, that sounds great. Um, actually, it should be under test. There you go. Uh, Windows, oh, test, test explorer, explorer, right there. Okay, and so now I've got this little thing. I actually like to pull it out, Scott, and put it right there so I can actually see the whole thing. Oh, yeah? Um, uh, here it says build your solution to discover all tests or run all to build, discover, and run all tests. So we have a build option. I'll say rebuild Let's solution. Let's see if it works. So it's just it's going to look at the, the actual code in a compiled form to figure out what tests it should run. And I'm not sure why it's not picking that up. Well, we're using XUnit, and this is a test runner. We may need an extension to do that. Is we that the case? We might. Um, and I don't know if we want to... Well, let's find out. These things are important because people find themselves in and this situation. Uh, Scott, you're, you're, you're looking this up on Google, and uh, hopefully we're going to get that up on screen in just a second so people can see um, exactly what you're doing. And then... Um, mm -hmm. So I'm just going here, and uh, I like to say I'm Googling with Bing because I can do that. <laughs> Why don't you go over to... You have xunit.runner. Okay. Well, there. let's make sure we talk oh. through it first because we put you up so that people would actually see oh, that... Good. So I just... We ran into a problem. We went and, we went and looked it up. Okay. Well, and, and the, the thing that I think is important to point out here is that sometimes when you see a demo in a talk or in a learning experience like this, uh, things go wrong. And you and I have a learning style such that we could hide that or we could <laughs> learn about it, right? Well, and you asked me to do something which we did not, we did mm -hmm. not plan on doing. And so it ran into something on my machine where it, it apparently wasn't quite ready for it. Mm -hmm. And we went, we're going to go right now and figure it out, decide if we're going to do it, because you now know what we need sure. to do. So and, what uh, I think is interesting here is that uh, we also asked you to make your machine from scratch. This is a fresh Windows. You'll yeah. notice it actually sometimes says uh, yes. it needs to be activated because we haven't <laughs> paid for it yet. Um, uh, fresh we Windows. Work for Microsoft. Well, fresh Windows, fresh Visual Studio, because we don't want something that we installed previously That's right. to potentially this is, affect things. This is Community Edition. This is exactly what you would get. Mm -hmm. So uh, is this something that we want to go ahead and do and come well, back to my machine? If you don't mind, why don't we take a minute or two and try it out? Is that I'm okay with fine you? with that. As All soon right. as we get, so great. So I'm it, noticing that it says xunit.runner.visualstudio. And look, here's a funny thing. Remember how we talked about things happening in the background and things happening <laughs> implicitly? In the time it took us to Google this, with Bing, with Bing, people, uh, it actually found it. So if we look up at the, at, the, at the screen right here, it found the unit test. It was chewing on it. Had we probably waited five more seconds, rather than panicking, <laughs> my <laughs> fault, uh, it actually found that. Uh, so go ahead and hit run. Well, that's awesome that that happens. happened because we got to walk through that with folks and realize that so let's make it you run. and I know neither one of no, us no. is perfect. But, but let's, but let's make it run and then I'll tell you, in fact, what is allowing it to do that. Yeah. All right. So that went and said the strings are the same. The thing that allows that, the thing that makes that possible is this engine, this, this, this one here, xunit.runner.visualstudio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is an adapter, right, that allows Visual Studio to, to see that because we, uh, the, the Microsoft people, want this test explorer to be agnostic. It should work with any kind of a test. Correct. Maybe you could just add one additional test for me and sure. then let's prove that sure. that is in fact the case. And, and uh, just to make sure I understand, um, I don't recall whether this was there before, but I, I think it was. And it just hadn't been gotten around to being restored correctly. Uh, uh, this was here. It and was that there. Was part, I just that was part of .NET new 
X unit. It was added. But so an, an interesting point would be if I had made that from scratch, mm -hmm. let's say for example I took your standard library right. and tried to make it a test library, I might find myself adding X unit and not adding the, the runner experience. And I would have found myself in that situation. So I thought we perhaps had forgotten the runner. All so right. Kathleen's here in the unit test and she's got a fact and she'll write another fact. Do you want to do a fact on the person, in fact, like you talked about? Yes, then we'll have to go ahead and add that library. Why so that'll make that? us do it. That'd be great. Okay, so um, uh, let's just uh, call this um, uh, first name stays the same. It's not terribly creative, but we kind of have a boring class. So um, it's going to need to uh, create, and VAR just says create it. We don't care what type it is, it is typed in the background if you understand typing. Otherwise, don't even worry about what that is. Right, we could say person P, but we'll say var P or person, you know, var mm -hmm. person. Uh, it will be of type person. And she says person, and look, if you wouldn't mind, back up and type PER, and notice there's no IntelliSense. It didn't tell her that person was allowed. But can I go ahead and do an automatic fix on this? This That's is what great, I want to do. Let's see if we can do that. That would be a great example of okay. why this would be uh, a. So uh, an let me ID just. Um, the keyboard's that. giving me a bit of trouble, but there it is. So now it says uh, change person uh, to. So what I'm it's doing is it's thinking that there's two possibilities. Either you misspelled something. Mm -hmm. This, this is the kind of classic autocomplete. Yes, person sounds error. like version. Hmm. Yeah. No, it yeah. seems like a stretch. <laughs> but then what's it say here? Add reference to class. Oh, let's well, do second. that. What okay. hover over that? And that's just make it work. That's the just make it work button. Mm -hmm. Now, I, Two things just happened there. Yes. Yeah, explain that. All right, so first of all, it added the library uh, to the projects. I did not have that open, um, but let me open it so you can see it now. Mm -hmm. So it added the library. That's what it said it was going to do. But it also quietly just fixed it which is I also needed a using statement. So up at the top where it says using my class live, that actually wasn't there before, mm -hmm. and now it's there. So now I can say a uh, new person, and this is just some C-sharp syntax, and uh, person dot first is. And while she's doing that, I want to point out what an interesting juxtaposition that is between what I was doing in Notepad at the command line, where I'd have to add a reference myself, I'd have to go and add the using myself, the benefit that you get from using an IDE, whether it be Visual Studio or whether it be something like uh, JetBrains Writer uh, or uh, Visual Studio on the Mac, there's also a Mac version of Visual Studio, you get that full integrated development environment that does multiple things in one motion. In one keystroke, Kathleen got a lot of work done. Okay, So she's going and doing an assertion to see if uh, Scott equals Kathleen. Nice. I expect that to fail. Uh, look, take another look at it. Person, person that first is, oh, not equal. You're confirming that Scott and Kathleen are different people. Yes, I am. Excellent. All yes, right. I am. So let's see if the so test explorer found yeah, that. So you haven't yeah. saved it, though. Look at this. Hang on. So the we, dirty no, flag. we haven't saved it to anything. Look There's the a dirty, dirty flag, flag. right? Yeah, so yeah. Uh, should I, go, I should go ahead and save yeah, it. Yeah, I think you should. Because uh, it's otherwise, it's not, we don't need to show you it not working again. You may need We've to also build it. I'm thinking I will. So I want to have this open um, and then just say rebuild solution. Uh, it doesn't give a, a lot of feedback here that it's not up to date. Uh, but there that run all was grayed out. That's its that's its indicator. And it, I didn't change anything on the one. Mm -hmm. It knows that it doesn't tr it doesn't um, say you need to run it again. But I'm going to go ahead and run it. Well, notice it also says it knows what tests it's never run. Exactly, before. it knows that this great. one is new, and so they both pass. And I personally think, uh, and I don't know what you think, uh, that as a beginner, learning to program by writing tests is a really great way to learn to program. Actually, I think tests are the very first thing to learn to do, even if you're testing 2 plus 2, because what happens is um, you, you wind up, I want to check something out. I want to do something new. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bill is going to show a different way uh, to do it uh, this, this after, this a little bit later today. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's after Yeah, much. he'll be here in about 15 minutes. Yeah, so uh, oh, we are going fast, aren't we? So the, um, when we uh, I lost my train okay. of thought, Scott. So there's a couple ways to th learn, think about how you're going to learn. You can learn right. by testing. Right, you right, can right. assert your assumptions. And it's so important because otherwise you're going to wind up making a console app and then you make another console app and before you know it, you have console app 32 sitting on your machine because mm -hmm. you've just done this over and over again, each one trying to test out one little idea. Mm -hmm. And otherwise you can put them in tests. They can all get great names mm -hmm. and you can really understand right. what you're doing. I didn't realize we were so late, sh no, short on time. Uh, yeah, we've got a timer over here now, and we're definitely running out of time. Uh, why don't you move to a real app? Absolutely. That's exactly where I want to go, because 
and I'm just going to open it um, the easy way here from recent projects and solutions. I'm going to go to this conference planner. And uh, this really takes a big jump, though. Um, so I want to make sure that we don't like make it crazy. Uh, the difference between this app and the app that we just did was uh, this is a pretty big. This jump. is this is a big jump. Okay, so let me see if I can't get a picture up here. But this is an opportunity this. to um, to have you understand how. Uh, how this much you can accomplish. I, we can actually just switch over to yeah, my machine Yeah, let's just do that. That's if you can switch easier. over to my uh, my other machine there, right. my we, director. We, so this is a great diagram that you created earlier to just yeah. give a sense. This is the classic boxes and lines diagram. Yes, yes. Okay, so what's happening here is that there's a browser. The browser knows how to do a few things. It knows how to display HTML, run JavaScript. JavaScript changes the HTML, which is loaded in a DOM. You can worry about that another time. But it asks for something out from the web. And it asks for something from the front end, and it says, hey, front end, give me some stuff. And that's going to be what we'll actually see if we run the app. So uh, that's, a, that's a project, the front end. The, when front, we say the front end is one project. That's a, that's it's a, one project. It's a web project. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's a web project, and it, does, it spits out HTML. Mm -hmm. It asks the back end for its data. Another the, web project. Another web project, exactly. And so you do this when you have data that you want to display in multiple ways. Mm -hmm. So this is something real companies really do, okay, right. where they have multiple uh, web projects doing different things. Right. And then before we leave this slide here, I want to make an observation because you kind of almost intuitively immediately moved my person object into its own yes. class. Yes, yes. Now in this example here, there's a little three letter acronym, <sighs> a TLA. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a TLA you'll see a lot, data Day. transfer or data transfer object. Mm -hmm. That's all of the shared stuff, right? So just exactly. like you immediately kind of intuitively, because you have experience, put person elsewhere, someone might need that. Yes. If we can switch over to your Mac and think about what that DTO project is. Exactly. Look at what's going on in there. So you've got okay, conference we've DTO. Got if good. she opens okay. that up, okay. what's in there? Is it logic? No, it's just it's all the well. There's a speaker. Persons. A speaker is going to be an let's awful at, lot like a, a person. Look okay, at that. so they've got names. They got bios. They got websites. This is about um, information for a conference, obviously with its name. Um, so it's almost the same as what we just looked at. Yeah. Because of the the mech, the the place it's running, it has some extra things called attributes, and you can look at those and figure out what they probably are. Required string length. That's pretty straightforward. You probably have a guess on that. So uh, we've got that. Then we have the front end, which spits out HTML, and this is something uh, called uh, web, um, sorry, razor pages. Mm -hmm. And our razor pages, do you know if there's a talk here at the conference about that? In the uh, we will have a disco, we'll have a whole thing in another track that you can go and find on razor pages. So just and we can also, search for it. We're here at .NET Conf, but there is also the Microsoft Virtual Academy classes. Oh, right. So you and can go out great. and search for introduction to ASP.NET, and uh, you can check out those razor pages things, and we'll also have deep full day long uh, learning on that. Uh, and then one quick resource I would point you to as well, if you go to ASP.net in your browser slash free courses. There's a whole series of free courses, some from us and some from other people. So lots of great places and partners that you can get uh, your, your uh, education from. So what I want to make sure that we see here is that these do different things. It's going to be a little bit tricky to get this on what I want to show you, but these do different things. They have different jobs. Come on now. Um, so the dependencies are different. So in one case, we're look, they're both look using ASP.NET Core all. That's all the stuff in ASP.NET Core, and it comes down with, with .NET, so it's really easy. There's something called Swashbuckle that, that you can learn about uh, if you uh, just Google for that. It does some, or Bing, sorry, Bing for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things that I want to make sure is clear, though, that we just introduced that concept of ASP.NET into this. .NET Core that we've yeah, been learning yeah. allowed uh -huh. us to make console apps. Mm -hmm. ASP.NET sits on top of .NET, and just as we've been outputting strings to the console, hello world, yes. we could output strings to the browser mm -hmm. and say hello world. Right. And the last thing I wanted to point out on this, because I think we're probably getting short on time, is mm -hmm. that the um, DTO is used by both of them. And that's so really important. what I wanted to get to in this application. Is it's, it's a great point. And you've done that by opening these two up and showing exactly. us Exactly. That. So that's why I wanted to open that up. I wanted to show that we have this library. Mm -hmm. It's used by both things. It's like the library we just built. It's bits and pieces of this are 
straightforward, not mm -hmm. always easy. And then the way it, it fits in together, you'll want to learn more about that. You've already mentioned a few things mm -hmm. um, that we've got. And if we go back to slides one more time, we do have a slide with a couple of extra references on it. Uh, I could do that. There we go. So we'll it. switch over to my Windows machine there, and then we've got our references. Right. So we already mentioned .NET. We've got uh, a couple of other places that you can jump off to. And there's many, many other places you mentioned the Microsoft Virtual Academy. Mm -hmm. And I really can't say enough nice things about the docs. If you go to oh, docs.microsoft.com, yes. they've really done just such a lovely job. And if you don't mind, I'll just take a moment and go over there. I think that's an excellent there. idea. So if you ever think about documentation being, eh, you know, this is, they've actually gotten to where it's really good. And if you don't like it, you can help fix it because it's on GitHub. That's a and great that's point. amazing. So let's, let's, let's make that point. So if I'm going to click on .NET, I can do a couple of things. I could jump into the reference API, which can be a little over, overwhelming. If I wanted to know about what a string does, I can pick different versions. That can be overwhelming. Let's back out of there. Instead of jumping into the API browser, the documentation, let's just go into uh, getting started or one of the tutorials. Yeah. All right? You can get in here and all the things we've been talking about, creating a class library, creating a hello world, you can walk through those things yourself. But to Kathleen's point, look at this. It says contributors. These are real people. You can be one of these people. Mm -hmm. And as she said, if you go over here, you can add comments. If you didn't find something was clear, you can, real human beings will look at those comments. But That's you can right. push edit. Uh -huh. and if you push edit, what's going to happen? You're going to click edit. And you're going to find yourself, as Kathleen said, on GitHub. You could be involved in open source in your learning process by helping us improve our documentation. Could be a misspelling. But it could be something that we made a mistake on. Right. And it can, you can also raise an issue on GitHub. You don't have to have, you don't have to say, oh, this is what it should be like. You can say, mm -hmm. I found this very confusing. I really wish it had done this. It left this piece out that I really wish it had had. You can put that in as an issue, and that winds up going to people, and somebody else can fix it. They can allow someone in the community to fix that, or maybe somebody at Microsoft will fix it. Because Microsoft does still have a huge investment in the documentation. Making it open source has certainly not made it something that they're asking someone else to do because they don't want to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. They're investing incredibly great people, real programmers, people with long experience in the right. industry are working on this every day, including one of the people I just saw up there. Absolutely. And finally, if we go all the way to the back two hours ago and we think about all these different .NETs, if we go to the documentation, you've got the .NET framework that lives on Windows, .NET Core that we've been talking about, an entire guide on C Sharp. And we're just in a few minutes going to join Bill Wagner, who's going to talk for two hours on the language, the That's syntax right. that we haven't talked about. And then we've also got F Sharp, another language that we're going to have another two hours on here at .NET Conf. Mm -hmm. All of these, including Visual Basic and Xamarin, all on the docs. So definitely check those out. Yeah, they're great. All right. I think that's our two hours. I hope this gave you some sense of what you can accomplish with .NET and .NET Core. Uh, we're going to take a short break here at .NET Conf. That's right. We're going to go get lunch. We and, are. And uh, in a few minutes, we'll be back with Bill Wagner. So if you're a beginner, this is the time. Call your friends, tweet your, uh, your brother-in-law or your sister-in-law, and say, come and watch the next two hours on C Sharp uh, Fundamentals. Yeah, that's going to be great. All right. Fantastic. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks.